So let me start by showing you what it is the end product that we're trying to create is going to look like. Um, to show you, I'm going to go to our, our DGS website under Publications and Newsletters because that's the category of document that we're working on right now. And I'll go down here to 1963 and show you the December, December 1963 issue. Now, as I said, this is the end result. This is what we're working towards. So what you see here is an image of the document. Uh, if I was logged in, I'd be able to click on a link there that would take me to a PDF version of the document. I can click on this link that will take me over to the document that has been scanned on the portal to Texas history. Um, and because it's been scanned, because I've already done this one, I also can now do the things that are kind of the, the desired end goal here. I can click on this index link, and it will take me to the, the index page over on the portal to Texas history. And what we're going to be doing is actually just transcribing the information from the index so that we have it available over on our website. So it looks something like this. You know, of course, it'll be different for every volume. But the idea is that once we have transcribed the, the actual text out of the index, and I have linked it, people coming to our website can come here and say, oh, I'm interested in the family Bible records of James Taylor Carrot, or Carroll, and they can click on that, and again, it will take them right over to the appropriate page on the portal to Texas history, and they can view and, and page through this article if desired. So that's kind of the, the desired end result here, and in, in the next couple of segments, I'll show you what it is you can do to help us get there. So the first step in the process is to sign up for a particular issue so that you have ownership of it and are not duplicating effort with somebody else. And we'll do that over using the, the Get Involved tools. To log, it's, it's best if you log into the website using your DGS user ID and password. Now, that's the user ID and password that you use to, account, to log into your account manager, which is where you would go if you were going to renew your membership, sign up for a seminar, or do any of those kinds of things like that. So if you don't know your user ID and your password, this is where you can come to find out. And if you have forgotten your login, your name, or your password, you can come here and get that figured out. Okay. Now, once you have that figured out, uh, come back to the website, go to the restricted content login, and log into the website. Now, you're logging into the website, but you're using the exact same credentials as you used over in the other page that I showed you. So let me get logged in here. And whether you know it or not, the, the website's actually gone over to Neon, which is the platform that we run all of our administration stuff, and has validated my user ID and password, and it knows that I'm a DGS member. And that's important. All right, so now when I go to get involved, um, I can go to volunteer sign up, and you will see something that looks something like this. Now, I'm doing this in the early stages of the project, so there's only 28 initial open spots. I'm going to be adding more, so you should see some additional uh, sign-up sheets show up there. But the idea is you would go to this, and you'll see all of the um, additions that are available, and you would grab one and sign up for it. So, for example, if I want to sign up for this 1956 merch, which I think is supposed to be March, I can click on Sign Up. And because I'm already logged in, it has already pulled my name, first name and last name, my email address for me, and with the option of adding my phone number. And that way I don't have to keep adding this information every time. That's only going to happen if you're logged into the website. So I'm going to grab that, that one. Oh, I do have a phone number. That is required. And I'm now signed up. If I go back and look, you'll see that that March spot has been taken. And if for some reason I don't want to do it, I can just come back here and click on the clear link. And that releases it for somebody else. So you need to claim the issue that you're going to work on is the very first thing. Now I'm going to leave that one open because I want somebody else to do it. Uh, once you have an issue, then you will go over to Publications, Newsletters, and you will go to the appropriate time frame. So I was looking at that 1956 issue, so I'm going to start with that one, so that's kind of unique. Um, all I would do is click on it. And now it's going to show me something. It's going to basically show me the, uh, the first page of the newsletter. And again, I've got links, which you can now see, to the, the PDF version of it. Because I've logged into the website and it knows that I'm a member, 
I don't have that. You have to log in to access this stuff. It just knows I'm a member, so it's showing me the PDF link. So if I want to, I can view the PDF version of that document, make that larger or smaller. Um, I can even, because it's a PDF, I can do keyword searches, all kinds of neat stuff, but we'll get to that later. Okay, I can also view it on the portal to Texas History, um, and I can page through that as well. Now, this is one of the early versions of the newsletters, and you'll note that it does not have an index. So what you're going to have to do is either using the, um, the, the, the version of it that's up on the portal to Texas History or the PDF version and look through, and you're just going to have to give me the names of all of the articles and the person that, uh, that created the article, the author, if you will. So, you know, this would be Genealogy Research in New York State, you know, by E.B. Comstock, and then Microfilm Uses, as shown in Dallas Herald Files. No author, so you wouldn't put anything. And you just go through this document, typing in the names of the articles that you see. Now, where do you type them? I, what I want is, in a result, is a text file not a word file, not anything formatted. I want something with all of the formatting removed. So it will look something like this. So what I need from you is to put the year and the month of the, uh, of the publication, and then just start typing the articles, and if you, if you know what the names of the authors, in a flat text file. And I want a, um, each article on a line all by itself. I don't need you know, additional line spaces in there. So it's going to wrap on you, but that's okay, because that really works best for me. So you can do this as I'm doing it in Notepad. That would be the simplest thing. You could do it in Microsoft Word and save it as a text file. Uh, you can do it in any variety of, of any word processors you may be familiar with, but the end result is I want just the plain old flat text file. Um, the other thing I'll note is that in some of the issues, they put quotes around all the article names for some reason that I, I can't really understand. It looks really awful, so please, if you come across an edition that has quotes in there, don't do it. I will appreciate that a lot. Now, only these very early ones lack an index of some kind. And I'm going to jump out of here and pick on a different one. So let's go back to newsletters. Most of the, the issues that we're working with, and let's just pick March of 1962, the document has a table of contents or an index. And so what you will be typing is the information that comes from the index. So that's a lot simpler for you. It's just variety family Bible records dash submitted by, you know, whatever. I've been pretty much, other than the question or the quotation marks, conforming to the uh, the way that the original document was indexed. So you'll notice that the titles in all uppercase letters, that's what I've been doing. If it's, you know, camel case, that's what I do. So you just kind of go by whatever it is the people that created the index went or did when they created it. Again, I don't need page numbers. I just need the article title. And if there's an author, that information. So pretty much all this information, but none of the page numbers. And I'll type it into a, uh, a text file for me. I know I can't communicate with the scanner because I'm not trying to open it. Um, in a file headed by the year and the month, and then all of the index, or the, all of the information in the index saved in a text file. And when you've completed it for that document, just mail this file to me at webmaster at dallasgenealogy.org, and I'll do the rest.